member for Lingiari. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this Friday, on the 24th of August, there will be a commemorative ceremony at Yurkuru, or Brook Soak, about 60 kilometres east of Yuendamu in the Northern Territory. The purpose of this commemoration is to recall the Coniston Massacre, which took place between August and October 1928, and where a large number of Aboriginal people were murdered by uh, an expeditionary force led by a policeman. Uh, the story is, this story is important to Australia in understanding our own history and around the issue of truth-telling, to appreciate the sacrifices that have been made and, in this case, the massacres of Aboriginal people. Mr Speaker, what is known as the Coniston Massacre was, in fact, a series of raids following two key events. The first began after the murder of Frederick Brooks on the 7th of August 1928 at Yukuru at Brooks Soak, as I mentioned. Brooks, a friend of Randall Stafford, who ran Coniston Station, had set out with camels, camels from Coniston in the hope of trapping a few dingoes to get him over hard times, it was said. He set up camp at the Sogies and was, by, many account, by some accounts, well liked by the local Aboriginal people. There are many stories told about Bullfrog, Jabbaranga, the man who killed Brooks. Most agree that Bullfrog Jabbaranga was angry about his wife staying with Brooks. Early one morning, Jabbaranga crept up and killed Brooks. People still visit the place where Jabbaranga hid from the revenge party with his little dog. He blocked the entrance of the cave, it said, with a stone or some spin effects, and he ultimately managed to escape and live to old age. Sadly, that was not the case for many other Aboriginal people. A board of inquiry, which began in late 1928, found that 31 Aboriginal people have been killed by Constable George Murray and others following the murder of Brooks. However, it's believed that many others, probably twice as many, uh, were at a minimum of six sites, were killed and were officially recognised by the board to have taken place. Aboriginal people of the area mention other sites where they say killings took place. But these weren't mentioned in the Board of Inquiry. Of course, most, if not all, of the Aboriginal people who were present around that time have passed away, those at least who weren't murdered. However, there are still many accounts told by people in the land claim evidence in the 1980s in other publications, such as Every Hill, a Go Every Hill Got a Story, Walpri Dreamings and Histories, Walpri Women's Voices, Kaidich Country and Long Time Olden Time. The story still remains vivid and painful to the descendants. Many people still talk about their uncles, fathers and grandfathers who were gunned down during the ceremony or hunting. The, the killings of, of Coniston are felt widely in Central Australia, scattering people far to the northwest and northeast. Sadly, some never return to their country. Mr Speaker, here is a salutary lesson to us all. But sadly, there are those, not here particularly, but elsewhere, who try to tell us that this is really not what Australian history is about. Well, it is. And we heard from the statement of the heart at Uluru about the importance of truth-telling of coming to terms with our past and understanding the role that people played in it. That's not to say that we should feel guilty about the past, but we should own up to the past and understand why, how people suffered and how they feel about the injustices and, in this, case, in this case, the killings that took place now 90 years ago. So this Friday is a very important commemorative event. And I would encourage those who might be listening and those who may have an interest to research this subject and the other massacres that have taken place across this country since us, since us whitefellas first arrived here.